What's up guys? Welcome to That Creative Life. It's me, James Mathis. Today, I want to give you three ways to help you study your Bible. So let's roll that intro and let's get started. I hear the song you sing As you wake up my soul today I feel the hope when your sun shines on my face Okay, so one of my youth asked me this week how I knew some of the things that we were talking about in youth because it wasn't in the English translation. And so I had used some of the Greek translations to look at some of the words and their meanings. For example, if we look in the Bible, and this is a big Bible, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. But if you look at the story about Jesus talking to Peter when he says, Do you love me more than these? Peter says, of course, you know, I love you. Then feed my sheep. And he says it three times. And on the third time, Peter gets upset. And that story is cool. It, it can teach a lesson that way. But if you look at the Greek, the first two times Jesus says it, he's saying agape. Third time he says philios, because that's how Peter was responding was, of course, you know, I brotherly love you versus that unconditional, the agape style of. And so looking up the word agape to understand what that means and looking up the word philios to understand where that means, and we get the word Philadelphia from that, the city of brotherly love, taking some time to look at some of those words changes some of the stories when you really dive into them. And so one of my youth was very fascinated by that. And so that is one really cool trick to being able to understand some of what you're reading is to look for the Greek translation, see what the word is, look up what that word means, because a lot of times Greek words have meanings that we don't have in English. So step number one, look it up in Greek, look it up in Hebrew, look it up in Aramaic, find out what the original said. Move on. In the easy and the crazy, love make me more like you. Number two, and this is for the guys out there more than the ladies. For me, a journaling Bible was not really something that had me excited because that's, I always thought of girls doodling and those, not really my cup of tea. But this, this is called an interleaved Bible. I saw a YouTuber use one of these. This has giant blank pages for you to write notes. And as a youth pastor, or if you're a Sunday school teacher, or full-time pastor, whatever it may be, having the ability to write those notes and write sermon notes on the actual pages is awesome. Even if you're not a leader in your church, having the ability to kind of try to write an understanding of what's going on for yourself is an awesome resource to have. You can really dive in and study that way. And something for me that I find really cool is once I get this thing filled up, I'll be able to pass this down to my daughter so she can see how I was studying the Bible through the different stages of my life. And I love the fact that I get to leave that to her. So this is a manly journal journaling Bible. It's an interleaved Bible. I will link one down below if you're interested. I really, really love this thing. It goes with me everywhere. And yes, it is huge, but it's worth it. So let's move on. Yeah. Number three is to go into your study with a plan. Don't just be like, okay, I'm gonna open it up randomly and see what the Lord has for me. While yes, you may sometimes get a message that is applicable to what's going on, picking a Bible book to actually dive into and study is a wonderful way to really get into the word and start seeing it as a bigger picture, not just little snippets. Because a lot of times we take little verses and run with them and we've missed the whole meaning. And so I like to say, we got to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. So by taking a whole book, you're getting more of the story. And so a couple books I recommend if you're new to the faith, Romans, if you've been in the faith for a little bit, Titus or second Timothy, I hope those three tips will help you really be able to spend more time studying your Bible, spending time in God's word and trying to understand what he's trying to say to you. Because I heard this at a youth pastor retreat recently that I went to. Prayer is for us to talk to God. Reading scripture is for God to talk to us. And you have to have that full both sides of the conversation for there to be growth in a relationship. So if you want to see that, we're going to talk about prayer later. Starting with reading the scripture, let God speak to you first. Sometimes we just need to learn to shut up <laughs> and listen. And I really hope that this will help you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, it would mean the world to me. 
I love you guys. Don't forget to live that creative life. I'll see you next time. Bye.